The Witcher on Netflix. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I watched this show um, and I binged watch. I didn't binge binge watch it. I, it took about a little about a week and a half to see all the episodes. And I never read the books. I never played the video games. I didn't know anything. I went in there blank, right? Um, which I kind of do with most things. Uh, I just really watch the movie versions. Uh, I don't really watch. I don't really read the comic books. I don't really read the, um, you know, anything else related the novels i don't do it i saw the witcher and i enjoyed it i actually liked it some people have considered this to be kind of like a um game of thrones knockoff uh but you know after really thinking about it i, I disagree and the reason why i disagree is because this has its own story its own plot its own world now in truth there's gonna there is a lot of movies and there's a lot of tv series out there that have to do with medieval times, the peasants, the kings, the queens, the knights, the the hobbits, the you know, it's like everything is in there. Lord of the Rings, you get the same thing. The elves, the dragons, the trolls, the this, the that. If in a way you kind of get those same elements in all of that because those things are very old. Those are the kind of stories that are like immortal. They they just keep coming at you in different formats. The Witcher is simply another format. That's all it is. It's not a Game of Thrones knockoff. I, I actually consider that to be an insult to Game of Thrones and to The Witcher because I think that um, The Witcher has a different kind of story to tell. It's the story, story um, of a guy named Geralt who is uh, some kind of a half-breed. He's not really human fully. He's something else of another species that there's not many of them left. And it is his charge now to find um, this uh, princess named Siri, who who uh, is is who had to escape from her kingdom, her mother's kingdom, being ravaged by uh, these bad guys. And I forgot the name of the bad guys, but uh, the point is, he's trying to find her. She's trying to find him, and most of the this first season is about that. But there's other elements to this too, like Yennefer, for instance. Yennefer is the, you know, Yennefer's um, uh, uh, story arc is interesting because we 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 first see her as how she was born, which was she had a disability, um, she had a real bad hump, and her face was all messed up and everything, and but then she was uh, taken in by this uh, witch, these these or mage mages, that's what they call them, and. She was she she apparently had power in her to to be able to practice these uh, magical powers. So it's all witchy and all of that witchy stuff. She becomes a very powerful mage, and and to the point that she has to go through this um, situation where she doesn't look so disabled <laughs> disabled anymore. She actually looks okay. So you know it. Uh, it I, I think her, but but that she doesn't stop there. That's what I like about this. Uh, you know, being beautiful isn't enough. Being um, a mage isn't enough. She wants something. She hungers for something more. She desires much more than anybody has ever offered to her and as anybody has ever wanted to offer to her. And she even tried to get it from... Um, the Witcher himself from Jera, but but it didn't really, or at least not yet in this series, is panned out. I'm looking forward to seeing what season two brings with that story arc. Gerald, and he's he's played by the same guy. If you recognize him, he's played by the same guy who played Superman in the D, in the recent DC Universe uh, movies and stuff like that. So he's walking around. I like his voice in this thing. I don't know if it's his voice or the, I have no clue, but it really sounds. It could, I guess it is his voice. You can lower your voice. Mm. I just know that th this was a great series. I enjoyed it very much. Um, and the all the different elements is obviously, they're obviously coming together to do something really good in the seasons to come. Um, I think it's only going to get better. Uh, here's a similarity with Game of Thrones. It started slow. Like Game of Thrones, the first couple episodes, you're like, uh, uh. then it starts picking up. 
it started picking up as the, as the episodes kept going. So I'm really excited to see what's going to come next. Uh, so we, we've seen the best of what Gerald has to offer, or maybe not. We've seen the best of what Jennifer has to offer, or maybe not. And let's not underestimate Siri, this little girl. She has a, spe- there's a something special about her, something very unique. She's not fully human either. I think Jennifer is half elf. Uh, from what I picked up on. Um, but Siri is also um, a half-breed of some sorts that she needs to discover herself too. She has a power, and you see it. Uh, this power manifests in this uh, episode, especially in the last uh, episode of the season. It's like, oh, my God, what has she done, you know? It, it's really, it's a really good series. I, I'm enjoying The Witcher. I, you know, one thing about Netflix is that they keep coming out with these, you know, Things and and Dracula. I mentioned Dracula in my last uh, Strange Planet episode. In this episode, I'm talking about Witcher. Uh, who knows what else I'm going to talk about in this year in 2020? You know, we're off on a good start here with all this. Have you seen The Witcher? What do you think about it? Talk to me. Comment below and share with me what you think. And on top of that, while you're doing that, why don't you subscribe to this channel? Please, uh, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, click on the bell for future notifications so that you can see future content when it becomes available. Until next time, this is Rough Press from Strange Planet. Take care. <laughs>